Hello, listeners, and welcome to another episode of Subscription Scaled. I'm your host, Nick Frederick. With me today is a special guest and fellow Nashvilleian. We have Rachel Sofer Sanders, who is the CEO and co founder of Routine. Rachel, welcome to the show. Thank you very much for having me. Excited Absolutely. to see your beginning here. Tell us uh, about yourself, your background, and uh, how you found yourself at Routine. Yeah, definitely. As you mentioned, I'm CEO and co-founder of Routine, and we really focus on optimizing health and human performance with precision nutrition, which we do with data and technology. And my interest in the space stems back to almost a decade ago when I started my career uh, in the health space and really had a chance to see where the opportunities lie to democratize data and really leverage technology to innovate and create better solutions to help people improve how they experience health and wellness. I was really inspired to dive deeper into the space and find a way to make an impact through launching my own or launching a, a new concept, a, a new company. Um, I wasn't exactly sure what that looked like. I decided to get my MBA and really spend the time there to really develop a thesis and kind of dive into the market and figure out where I could make the biggest impact um, and where I could really contribute to those innovative technologies that were that I was seeing earlier on in my career. And that started for me in the musculoskeletal space, really around improving patient experience and decreasing the close to $400 billion spend that the US market has. And during that time and for many years prior, I was really suffering from a lot of stress and fatigue and looking for ways to optimize my own health and daily performance, looking across my health stack. So what I was doing on nutrition, what I was doing on sleep and exercise. And around the same time, I connected with Routine's other co-founder, Dr. Daniel Wallerstoffer, who had a shared experience around looking for his ways to optimize his own health. And when we both looked at nutrition, um, we really came together because we didn't really see what we wanted in the market. And we knew we needed a personalized approach. We wanted it to be based on our unique data, but the options that we saw really weren't hitting it, hitting the spot for us. And so Daniel being the scientist he is, really dove into finding a way to use science and use data to build a better option for consumers in the personalized nutrition space. And what we've done is we combine our proprietary technology, so we leverage AI, and then we also consider individual DNA, blood level, and lifestyle test results in order to create the most accurate micronutrient format for your body and deliver it through precision dosing. And we're really doing this because 90% of people don't get adequate daily micronutrients. And that leads to concerns like we were experiencing, fatigue, stress, mood, and more. And we really launched Routine and created this very innovative product to make an impact and to really go after the mission of enabling people to leverage their health data to improve how they look, feel, and perform every day. Okay, that's right. First of all, we're in Nashville, right? One of the healthcare capitals of the country here. And so I can see this, that would be a natural progression for you. But what about being in that direct to consumer space? Did you find it interesting? Cause that's not common for, for those in our area here. Yeah, so I started my career on the finance side of healthcare, so focused on healthcare services in investment banking, and specifically saw a number of companies on the service side develop solutions that were much more consumer centric, but really saw that there was a ways to go on building a better healthcare future around building one that is really built for the consumer. It's data driven and it's connected. And that's really what drove me to the kind of more consumer facing side because Healthcare should be consumer driven and it should be built for the human. And I, the best way to really do that, to get the data, to de deliver innovative solutions and continue to iterate is really to go direct to that person that's really using it and then create kind of these new solutions that may be brought to the more traditional services. Well, we typically see so many of these services delivered through some sort of intermediary, whether that's an insurance company or an employer or somebody like that. It's got to be, I'm sure there has been some challenges or, or some things along the way that you didn't expect when you're really trying to go directly to that end consumer to reach them, to find them in the first place, and then create that relationship with them. So has that been different than you expected? Are there any kind of gotchas along the way there when you started going directly after that, that, that end consumer? Yeah, there's obviously challenges in the direct consumer and the customer acquisition side of things. One of the biggest opportunities we really found was in the education around how people can use their health data to improve how they look and feel and perform every day. And that's how we've dove in and, and a lot of the messaging and the con conversation we have with our customers. 
is this is the data we're looking at. This is how we're analyzing it. These are the insights that you're going to get from utilizing routine. Here's the product. And then here's a opportunity on a digital side to use the tools we've developed to dive into more personalized content, to really track how your health is progressing over time and have a much more kind of holistic and full kind of feedback loop conversation so with customers. Let's talk a little bit more about the product itself. I went to the website and was trying to see what that uh, experience is like. You already hit on it. So there's a couple of tests at the beginning that you take that will help tell you more about that consumer, what their specific makeup is in order to be able to deliver them a tailored experience. But walk us through that a little bit about what a consumer can expect when they come, because I think it's actually a little bit different than the typical subscription company that you, you think, hey, we're going there. I've got a set of SKUs. I'm trying to sell you one of them. It's a one size fits all. You guys are actually turning that on its head and trying to do a, no, this is just for you. So walk us through that. Yeah, definitely. It's definitely a, a reimagined approach to the direct consumer and the standard kind of quiz featured product recommendations. We look at more data points across lifestyles, data points like age, weight, biological sex, activity levels, and diet as well as genetics and blood levels that we combine, compare to clinical studies using our technology, and then create a very accurate micronutrient formula specific to your body. And then we deliver it on a one-to-one -one dosing basis. So that means that every single subscription we send out is completely customized to that individual. We do not have a set of SKUs that we pick and choose from. It's truly So that in and of itself has to present some uh, economies of scale challenges, right? Like how do you deal with that? If we're, you're going out there trying to create this very customized, tailored, bespoke experience for a consumer, but at the same time trying to scale up operations and, and fulfillment in your product itself, like how do you balance between those two things? Yeah, we're really building a next generation precision nutrition offering, which of course comes with challenges around operations and everything else. We're turning the standard make 10,000, 100,000 of the same product and send it out completely on its head, which means that it's a more expensive process. It's more time consuming and there's some kind of challenges around how do we make sure that we're getting the product out to customers and as quickly as possible and going through all of the quality checks. We have a great kind of supply chain and there's a number of innovations that we've put in place that have allowed us to deliver the product the way we can, but we're continuing to invest in kind of that whole process, everything from the testing side to turnaround times to speeding up the, the process around production to make sure that we can deliver the product as quickly as possible. We are not an Amazon Prime two-day delivery product. It takes some time to deliver, but we're delivering on really innovative and new technology um, that combines the best in nutrition science and genetic research at a reasonable price point, pretty good time. How are you seeing consumer time? accepting that? So they're coming to a site, they're having to put in a lot of information, even go through the test. But at the, I, I can see that causing some friction. On the flip side of it, if somebody's gonna go through that time and effort, they're likely to stay uh, a consumer or subscriber for quite a while. So how have you seen uh, consumers reacting to that? Yeah, I'm not a nutrition support product for kind of your first for, foray into vitamins or micronutrients. Um, our customers are really coming to us from other brands because they want to use data to make better decisions about their health and lifestyle and have products that are tailored specifically to their needs versus this one size fits all approach of the past. And we really turned that potential friction into an opportunity to show that we are looking at more data points, our analytics are more comprehensive and you're developing that one-to-one -one formula, which allows consumers to get different insights, new insights, and have a reason to believe around, maybe you're gonna get your micronutrients in two weeks versus two days, but that's because they're actually tailored to your body versus an arbitrary standard that is really tailored to no one. So, so let's talk about then your cohort of customers, because if you're talking about that sort of experience and you yourself said there's probably not their first experience with vitamins and, and supplemental nutrients, where, where are you seeing them come from? Are these athletes? Are, there, are these people with health problems who are needing something very specific? Or what types of people are? Yeah, approximately 76% of the US does take already some sort of daily nutrition supplement. 
So we're talking about a large percentage of the population that we can look at when it comes to not your first foray into micronutrients. That said, our kind of current customer base are really these high performers, people who use data throughout their lives to make informed decisions. So they're using data um, to make decisions about real estate, about finance, and, and really wanting to use their data to make decisions about health. They're slightly, they skew slightly older in terms of kind of the direct to consumer basis. We're more in the 30s to 50s age group and psychographic wise, really more focused on psychographic versus a gender specific. But like professional wise, these are scientists, they're engineers, they're MBAs, they're executives that are trying to optimize their daily performance and make sure that they're feeling um, and performing at their best throughout whatever they do and whether that's in work. Are you reaching those customers? Are there specific channels that you're finding are working better than others when you're trying to reach that type of consumer? Yeah, our customer acquisition is, is really split between organic and paid social. We've grown mostly through paid social to date, but we're expanding more into kind of content, community and partnership opportunities. And we have been doing so over the past few months and onboarding a new head of brand who's really spearheading those efforts. And there's some new exciting content partnerships that have recently launched in the past couple of months. Well. Content there, when you, because these are a fairly segmented and specific set of consumers who are very interested in health for a variety of reasons, are you finding that their engagement with your community is high? And what are you offering them to not just provide them the product itself, but a place that they can go get more information and interact with other kind of like-minded subscribers? Yeah, we have, so we have a digital dashboard that the kind of experience around testing and form personalized formulations really um, comes together with personalized content information and opportunities to learn and content everything from understanding our form factor, which are microbeads, to a more in-depth understanding on how genetics really impact how your body absorbs processes and utilizes certain nutrients to how micronutrients impact other parts of health, whether it's glucose monitoring to kind of athletic performance and beyond. So how are you, you've been at the business for about three years, I believe, and two years? Two years. We launched exactly okay. or awesome. two years well, ago last week. Congratulations on the two-year mark. Since you're still in some of these early stages, how are you scaling things up? Are you, are you trying to do it in a kind of a linear fashion? Are you trying to get to a stage and then throw some a bunch of fuel on the fire? Like, how do you see things stepping up? Yeah, we've spent a lot of time really investing in the product development, in the, the messaging, the uh, platform, uh, and we're still doing a lot of work around elevating the, the full experience, everything from the physical to digital, and then really scaling up from there. We've done a great job building out the product, the community, the content, and there's a lot of opportunity to grow from here, which we are looking to take advantage of over the Like you would months. need to spend a good bit of time on that content on the site and getting the message out there because it is a different type of experience, a different type of product. This isn't going and buying mm -hmm. a, a different type of sports drink here. This is a very different way of getting nutrients. So spending that time to educate and having those resources there and available, the customer is at least some level of interest can come in and then get more information. That makes a, a whole lot of sense. How do you go about creating that? content, what's your process is there, and how, how are you going to continue to evolve that? Yeah, we approach it in a variety of ways. First is really one of our core values um, as a company is to really build human first, and that stems from the team to how we think about product and kind of growth and figuring out from a consumer standpoint, what's interesting, what matters, and how can we help people improve their health through everything that we're doing as a company. So that's really where the content stems from, and that also goes into the product. There's a lot of interesting insights that you can get from the data that you're connecting. We don't just offer you a like physical product. We tell you what's going on with your data. So if you have genetic, if you're testing your genetic data, what does your genetic variant say about X, Y, Z nutrient to like where are you on blood levels within a normal or deficient range to how all of that data impacts the nutrients that you like could be taking or should be taking on a daily basis. So there's a lot of kind of product education and engagement that we focus and, on as well. And how have you seen customers interacting with that content online? Is that the primary way they get it or are you have Facebook pages and other blog posts, I guess content on other sites? How, how are you getting the message out there? Yeah, that's definitely a variety of channels. So we have social, so we're at routine underscore co on Twitter and um, Instagram, Facebook, 
We also have a blog. We do partnership content, have a large email and engaged email list and newsletter opportunity where consumers can come and sign up to start to learn more about the product and kind of more data-driven health before they even sign up for a routine. And we're, there's a number of exciting kind of up and coming things that we're doing as a company that will improve the reach of that, of that education. What did, so interesting, you're, you guys are an online health related product that just went through a pandemic, or I should say we're not all the way through it. It's certainly getting better, but uh, you just went through it. How did that impact things? Did you see an a big influx of people looking for supplements in ways that they thought might help their health and prevent COVID? How, what happened? Yeah, so we were fortunate to grow over five times in 2020, and that was due to a variety of, of trends that was going on both externally and then also we, as I mentioned, one of our core values is human first, another is really data-driven and evidence-based. And we combined those to bring up some product launches to earlier in 2020 than what we were originally anticipating in order to help people get more insight and manage through what they needed for the pandemic. It was definitely an interesting, as an earlier stage startup, it's definitely interesting to see and look back how everything went down. But I think that overall it was helpful for the business, but also the pandemic was obviously very, it was horrible and it's unfortunate everything that happened across the board. But trend wise, I would say that it was impactful in helping people understand that they can get data about their body and use that to make decisions about how they live their life. And specifically on the COVID side, that even goes down to COVID testing. Hey, I don't feel great. Like I, maybe I have COVID, I should sign up to go get tested. And then I can use that testing information to make choices about what I do and how I live going forward. Or that I have a certain health condition and I need to be more cautious, or I need to think about how my I can set myself up to deal with this in the best way I possibly can. A lot of that conversation came down to micronutrients, specifically vitamin D, as well as just overall lifestyle and nutrition, and really focusing on ways to prevent and create a better kind of optimized body versus the more kind of diagnostic and symptom focused health. So I think coming out of it, there is a whole number of new empowered health consumers that did not exist um, before the pandemic. So you've talked a couple times now about data, right? The data that consumers are giving you and that you're gathering on them. You're operating around the healthcare space here. Number one, how are you getting that data, keeping it and then giving yourselves insight to it? How do you, what is your strategy around data? And then what are the regulations that you guys have to contend with here? Is HIPAA one of them that, that impacts you? Yeah, that's a great question. So we've built our, our platform to be very flexible. We believe that consumers deserve to be able to use the data they have to get better, more tailored health products. And whether that means getting data through us or bringing data they have through another testing opportunity to use that data to personalize our product. So consumers can bring data they have from 23andMe or Ancestry.com they can also input blood levels from other testing companies, and we're also working on new data source integrations through wearables like sleep tracking and nutrition trackers. So there's a wide variety of ways to bring your data. We also offer our own at-home health tests or at-home wellness tests on the DNA testing side and the blood testing side, if consumers prefer to go that route as well. And then in terms of how we think about data, so unlike other companies that do genetic testing, we do not sell, share, or profit from your data. The only way that we're using the data is to inform the micronutrient subscription and the insights that are delivered to you via your personalized dashboard. And we treat data as securely as we possibly can and look to the, the highest level of, of security, whether that's through HIPAA or other kind of so how do you get consumers comfortable with that? Because you're they're, you're asking for a lot of data from them, a lot of very personal information, and then even updating it over time, you're giving them a very personalized nutrient formula. How are you putting customers at ease that you can trust us with your information when you're a startup? Yeah, that's a great, that's a great question. Our consumers are coming to us because they want more informed information with their data. And we tell them that we're not selling it or sharing it. I think one of the biggest concerns consumers have specifically around genetic testing is using it for profit 
that is not going to benefit the individual consumers with which other companies do. We don't do that. We say that it's in our privacy policies, it's in our sign up policies. So I think that fact in and of itself is, is really helpful in getting consumers comfortable with the product. And we also don't require it. So that's the other thing we haven't really said is we can create micronutrients and help you track your health progress by life by the lifestyle assessment alone. We do dose based on age, weight, and biological sex, and then layer on activity levels and diet and are already more precise on the dosing than anything else in the market just from that um, assessment alone. So let's turn to the customers that you have that have come on your product. And we talked a little bit more about this is probably a stickier type of product just because of you know, what it takes to get up and running with it. And then the, just the type of consumer that you're really going after here. Number one, what are you seeing from a trend of how long they're staying with you? And then what are you doing to retain the customers that you do have? Yeah, we're seeing a uh, fairly strong retention comparatively in the market and one of the things there's a couple of reasons behind it so one the data-driven approach delivers personalized insights before you even get the product so people are starting to learn about what's going on in their formula and the why behind it versus just getting something in the mail that they don't understand and there's no real reason or reason to believe behind it from day one and then we're really investing in the customer experience across the board from the physical product delivery and unboxing to brand to the digital product experience that will really have kind of an opportunity to elevate that experience and the retention across the board. What about from an operational perspective? You've got com customers that are obviously, for whatever reason, going to look to churn. They just can't afford it anymore or for whatever reason, don't see the value, just at lifestyle changes, whatever the case might be. Between that and then some of the more involuntary reasons like, hey, I'm not able to charge your card anymore. What are you guys doing there to, again, you spend a lot of time and effort to go get this customer. What are you doing to keep them? Yeah, we do everything you would do on the direct consumer subscription side, but a couple of the kind of key things that we do is we do pay a lot of attention to why consumers are churning and where there's opportunities to really invest in, whether it's messaging, education, content, communication to like digital experience that can really impact a, a number of those reasons. For instance, so we launched the health tracking capabilities and those kind of more health tracking tools and that had a strong impact across a number of our retention metrics. And so there's that's one example of how we think about prioritizing what we need to do and developing a roadmap around retention. There's also a number of kind of lifestyle marketing um, tactics that we use and then we'll continue to invest in going forward. We still have a very lean team given that we're an earlier stage startup. So some resources we haven't fully invested in, but lifestyle marketing and kind of constant communication is another. And then we do offer a premium product and we do everything we can to pair premium customer experience with it. Granted, there are some obviously on always operational challenges and things that might be out of our hands, but we really pride ourselves on great customer service and headed by our head of CX who is um, right. fantastic. Since you're in that, you know, ramp up period of the business, when it, look, when it comes to adding staff and, and bringing new resources onto your business or going out and fi finding the right partner, whether that's a technology vendor or filament vendor or a supplier, whatever the case might be, what are the things that you look for that tells you that, yeah, this is somebody that, that's good for us? That's two questions, right? It's one on the internal side and two on the external side. On the internal hiring side, so we look at it from a variety of ways, but it's really, is this person going to be additive to the team and the culture and really be able to dive in, learn, and really be curious about what we're doing? We also have a very kind of, another one of our values is like building a, we are individuals and one team, and we really want people who will stand up, will voice their opinions, will offer suggestions regardless of rank. So we look for people who are risk taker, takers, who are curious, who fill a gap that we don't have with experience and are interested in growing with us and really diving in. So that's how we think about hiring on the internal side. In terms of external vendors, we try a lot to hire internally and do things internally versus outsource to external vendors just based on experiences we've had in the past. When we do bring on vendors, we look for kind of culture and like communication fit. Things move really fast and we're innovating in a very interesting and cutting edge space. And so we need the vendors to be able to iterate and work with us at a cadence that makes sense and really great resource like resource checks and recommendations. 
you're gonna you're gonna need to pause this i'm forgetting okay. the word reference yeah. checks thank you <laughs> yeah so like i i also do especially if it's a big project we do reference checks like we're working we are now working with an agency and a vendor to help us rethink our brand and really launch a much more elevated experience across brand. That's a very large project, time consuming project that we spent a lot of time of reference checking and thinking through the best methods for us. These, especially when you're in the subscription space and everything's about recurring, right? Like ongoing, not just one time transactional, the relationship component is paramount. You're, you gotta find somebody who thinks the way you do, who communicates right. and who's gonna be there for you as you scale up that business for sure. So the, those are all great points. In the two years that you've been doing this, are there any specific lessons learned or things looking back that you were like, man, I wish I could go back and tweak that lesson. I'm sure there's a lot of different things, but it's always easy to look back with rose colored glasses. But is there anything specific for the listeners that you're like, man, be, be on the lookout for this when you're in the early stages? Yeah, there's a thousand things that I write them down on a daily basis, but I would say it probably boils down to three points across like time management and resource management, execution, and of, like, trusting yourself or just like making a choice is more than trusting yourself. On the time and resource management side, time as a founder, time and money, but time is your, you can't get it back. So making sure you're really being focused around like how you're spending your time, what you're doing versus what you're bringing in house. And then on that resource side, thinking about what is core to your business and the knowledge base that you absolutely have to have in house versus the knowledge that you might be able to like get from a vendor or a consultant and then bring that in later down the road is something to really think about and that's different for everyone. The second point, now I forgot the order in which I said that, resources, what did I say? Let me just fine. start over and I'll do fine. two and then I'll remember it. <laughs> what was yeah, it? Can so you ask looking the back again? at you know, the two years of the business and, and what you guys have learned already to this point, if there's any, are there been any specific lessons learned looking back that you've been like, okay, if I could go back to myself a little while ago and, and have done things a little bit differently, what are some key things that you would have thought of that you can offer to other listeners who are in that boat right now? Yeah, definitely. There are a lot, but I would say if what kind of boils down to two main categories for, for me on the advice side, which is time and speed of execution. So on the time and kind of resource management side, time is a resource that's very valuable to a founder and figuring out what's the best way to spend your time. And then what are you doing? What are you bringing in house? And what are those core components that are really valuable to your business that you need to have the knowledge base in house? versus being able to maybe work with a consultant or someone part-time or another vendor and bring that knowledge in-house at a later time. The second is really around speed of execution. There are a number of times, number of days and times throughout the day that you don't have an answer, but not moving is death in startup world. You have to figure out a way to make decisions and move quickly, even if you don't know that's the right answer. And what I do when I come to those issues is I, Typically look back at our customer feedback and look at our customer data and just look at it for 30 minutes and say, okay, what am I learning from this? What am I missing? What is the question that I have at hand? And is there anything in here that can help answer that? Because you're building for your customers and your customer feedback is the best place for answers. Uh, and so that's really what I do, but you, you often do not have the right answer. You just have to go. I can't tell you how much I love hearing you say that. In fact, I wrote down not moving is death because I think it's actually another way to say one of my favorite quotes, which is, don't let great be the enemy of the good. You've got a thousand things to do. If you're trying to do absolutely yeah. everything perfect, that means there's a hundred other things that you're not doing at all. And when you're wearing multiple hats in a startup, you gotta be doing, you have to do them all, right? You can't not do some pieces of thing. You kind of just have to. So it's better to get 10 things 90% of the way than five things 50% of the way in, in my book. Exactly. And frankly, even if you get something 100% of the way that you think is 100%, not, it's probably only right. 85 because you haven't point. user tested it yet. That's how we think. We don't think about that regardless, regarding to some products. We are do offer like health and wellness solutions. So there are specific parts like testing and quality and sure. kind of the, the data side that you, you yeah. get 110% correct. But on brand and messaging and some like website improvements, that's 
you have to test and you have to get, you have to get out there with good or okay. Oh my gosh. How many times have I looked over website copy or white papers and things like that and found myself tweaking a paragraph going, I just spent a lot of time on this and I don't really think I made it any better. I just made it different. We've, we've all been there. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, Rachel, so many fantastic <laughs> insights today. And I loved hearing about this very unique business. I'll be very interested to see uh, how you guys grow and scale. Because like I said at the beginning, so many subscription businesses that I talk to are trying to sell a whole lot of the same thing, or at least uh, of a few things. When you guys are trying to create very specific experiences for consumers, but doing it in a subscription type of way, which is uh, just a fascinating model. So I'll be very interested uh, to, to see how you guys grow. So best of luck with that. For the listeners today who want to find out more about the company, tell us about the website, tell us where they can go to get their questions answered. Yeah, definitely. So uh, you can go to our website, which is routine, spelled R-O-O-T-I-N-E dot co. You can also find us on social at routine underscore co on Twitter and Instagram. And you can also find me on Twitter at Rachel S. Sanders. So thanks again for so much uh, for today, for taking the time to, to come on and share your experiences with us. And best of luck to you and the routine team. Thank you. And uh, thanks for having me. It's been fun.